What's up guys, this is Edmund Crossover, I'm back with a new episode of Out of Naruto was in the Marvel Universe Part 14 And if you did enjoy this video, give this video a like and if you need my channel, I like my content, subscribe And hit the notification bell for more crossover fictions, now let's begin this new video Chapter 16 Present vs Future, Good Morning, Handsome Naruto chuckled as he caressed his wife's head while she snuggled against him Good morning, goddess, he said cheerfully as he sat up and saw Rhea standing there. What time is it? Noon. Oh well, I'll take today off, Naruto said nonchalantly as he got out of bed and strolled downstairs to the dining room with his wife. Where are the others and kids? They're out playing in the cove. Naruto came to a halt and looked at her, perplexed. Without me? Which is why I'm here to wake you up and take you to have fun with us. Naruto wrapped his arms around his immortal wife. You're so good to me, Rhea. You're such a child, Rhea said to her husband before snapping her fingers and replacing her garments with a two-piece bikini and Naruto's with swimming shorts. Come on, dear, they are waiting for us. Yash. After opening the door, Naruto held Rhea in his arms like a bride before sprinting to the cliff's edge and leaping out in a free fall to the water, where their family played around. Christmas and New Year's had passed without incident for the Uzumaki clan and the Bostonians, as crime had reached an all-time low, a record that would almost certainly be nigh unbreakable due to the ghost of Boston's notoriety. Naruto informed his wife about meeting Santa, saving the holiday from a renegade elf, and even receiving a kiss from Black Cat, which he had to calm Kuroka five times that night after the wives. They were surprised, of course, but their delight was heightened when the gifts were from Santa himself, making them even more eager to unwrap them. The twins, though, were the most ecstatic as they opened their gifts, in terms of gifts, Naruto told his wife about the Battle of Angiari artwork and how he came to get it. He now has physical custody of the painting. When Seiko inquired, Naruto replied that the original owner, the founder of the artwork, had intended to present the painting to the ninja as a Christmas gift after saving the unnamed person. Dada. Dada. A drenched Naruto hovered in position, waiting for his children to swim to him with Seiko's assistance. Life is good. Weekly update, Manhattan's Avengers Mansion. United States of America, New York City, New York. The renowned Avengers' previous headquarters were located in Midtown Manhattan. The Invincible Iron Man, the Incredible Hulk, Wasp, Ant-Man, and Thor were the original members. Captain America, the World War II superhero who was equal to Stark in authority and leadership, later joined the team. Their numbers grew, but a terrible event triggered by one of their many members shattered the team, and the Avengers disbanded. With the residents now inside, the base was becoming more active. What exactly is a futurist? Steve inquired of Tony. What do you mean? Stark said as he picked a square of tofu with his chopsticks and triggered a newspaper hologram with his Avengers ID card. Well, the newspaper always called you a futurist, and I've always wondered what a futurist is, Steve said as he performed one-handed push-ups, and unless you're interested in Italian art, I'm still not entirely sure what that is. Tony came to a halt as he considered the words. How to explain? A futurist is someone who tries to predict the future or, in my case, to create it. I'm inventing technology for the next century to make the world a better place, he said, manipulating a graphical chart in the hologram. For instance, having news and information to reveal in wireless signals as opposed in a newspaper. Steve had stopped working out to talk to his teammate while sipping a cup of raw eggs. It had been a month since he returned to the base and the reason was because Stark wanted to patch things up and maybe rejoin the Avengers, albeit one of them would most likely not return because he has his own team. I like newspapers, Steve stated, holding the object in his palm. For instance, this one has a picture of you fighting Hydra. He placed the paper with the indicated picture of Iron Man fighting a Hydra machine. And even from a picture, anyone can see that you don't know how to fight. Tony was irritated by his statements. What? There are probably 20 supervillains out there who disagree with you, Steve said, placing his hand on the inventor's shoulder. Meet me in the training room in five minutes, we've got work to do, Steve stated somewhat solemnly as he exited the kitchen, while a smirking Tony read the real newspaper rather than the hologram. After five minutes, the training area was dark, with a long light focused on the boxing ring, where Captain America and Iron Man stood wearing boxing gloves instead of their suits. The two heroes were not alone, as they had an audience in the grandstand, which included the team's main powerhouse and archer. As he was shortly joined by Hawkeye, Hulk smirked at the impending whooping of one of his old teammates. The two had a rivalry that bordered on sibling rivalry, but this was one event they couldn't pass up. 
This is going to be good, Hawkeye exclaimed, rubbing his hands in anticipation. Yep, simply agreed the green giant, it's been a while, Hawkeye. Two years. So, what have you doing? Mercenary stuff for S.H.I.E.L.D., Hawkeye observed the team's former powerhouse. I heard you formed your own team not too long ago. The agents of SMASH if I recall correctly. Yep. Steve turned to face Tony. From what I've seen, your fighting style is to tackle people and blast them. If I had to guess, I'd say you've never been in an actual fight in your life, he said with a cold tone. W well I, Steve directed the shorter man to punch me. What? Tony inquired, surprised, and was ready to object when Steve ordered him again. He turned to the side and threw a good right hook, only to wind up on the floor. Ha, Hawkeye said as he gently elbowed Hulk, who chuckled in accord. Tony lay on his back and glanced at the super soldier, grumbling, did that just happen again? Come on, let's try it again. Steve assisted Tony to his feet and motioned for him to bring it on, which he did, only to be sent flying against the ropes and onto the mat again. Hulk and Hawkeye couldn't stop laughing at the exhibition of whooping while Tony shakily hoisted himself up against the ropes. Tony charged again and launched a few punches that Steve easily avoided before grabbing one hand and countering with his own jab. The attempt increased the volume of the laughter fest above, much to Tony's chagrin. You know, my armor protects me, Tony explained as he declined Steve's hand. It would have taken you down before you even touched me. He stood up and headed to the corner where he began to remove the apparatus. And if the suit I was wearing couldn't handle you, I got four more that could. Tony, you can't always rely on your armor, Steve counseled, as this was one of the sources of their conflict, you have to be ready for anything. Tony responded, that's the whole point, I'm working to know exactly what's coming, I'll know exactly what to be ready for. Like me? Yes, Tony replied to the strange voice before turning around and seeing a hooded figure flick his brow, causing him to stumble on his buttocks. Patronus hummed while shaking his head. For someone who's a futurist, you didn't see that coming at all. Patronus. Naruto exclaimed as Hulk jumped to his side and extended his gigantic hand for a shake. It's been a while. How are things in Boston? Patronus nodded happily. Good. Vista Verde. Same. You should come by to visit again, although your first time shouldn't count. Hulk trailed off as Patronus hissed softly. Tony lifted an inquisitive brow. You two know each other. They said, nodding, how? Not telling you, the two contrastingly tall heroes replied with a high five, did you see the event? Patronus restrained a laugh before responding, how could I not? He quickly joined Hulk in laughter, much to Tony's disgust. So, this is the ghost of Boston, huh? Hawkeye appeared in front of the rookie hero, you don't look much to fit that title. Naruto examined the man's attire, which appeared ridiculous in comparison to his own. Hawkeye is dressed in a V-shaped purple mask, a scaled armor-like purple vest with a purple band around his sleeveless right bicep, fingerless purple gloves, and matching leggings and boots. He had a purple quiver full of arrows and a collapsible bow on his back. What's with the purple? Accessorize much. Patronus remarked monotonely, and Hulk chuckled as Hawkeye reached for his bow. Fortunately, Captain America intervened and prevented any conflict from escalating for their sake. Now, now, let's all calm down. He said to the hero of Boston, I can't tell you how pleased I am that you're here. It's kind of hard to ignore your message when my inbox was filled with your requests and all. Patronus sighed. Tony turned to face the super soldier, requests? To join the team of course. Patronus chimed in, which I had refused time and again at Yamatai then home, but I at least agreed to look around the base to see if it might worth it. Speaking of the base, how did you get in here? Tony said of the mute ninja, I will find out. Patronus countered casually, and you will fail, now on with the tour? As he walked ahead of them, Steve chuckled, follow me. The Baxter Building is located in Midtown Manhattan. United States of America, New York City, New York. These Fantastic Four, as you call them, are they mortal heroes as well? One of his teammates inquired, it was Thor, Odin's son and Asgardian prince. He was tall, often compared to his rival, teammate, the Hulk, and had blonde hair and blue eyes. His head was protected by a silver helmet, and a red cape was attached to his black armor, which included silver circles, red wrists, a big golden belt, and towering golden shoes. The fabled Mjolnir, a mighty hammer that had aided him for centuries, was in his right hand. Wasp, the Avengers' opinionated teammate, was with him in addition to the Thunder God. She came up with the name for the team. 
Wasp wore a black and yellow dress that exposed much of her back over black leggings, yellow gloves, and boots. She had blue eyes, short auburn hair, and a shapely physique. Yellow headphones were worn over her ears, combined with a choker around her neck, to give the illusion of a real wasp. Ant-Man led the captivating party in his red bodysuit with blue and lines running through it. His forearms were covered in black and blue gloves, with a red mask covering his face, lips, and antennas in the forehead area. He wore a silver belt that shone slightly and held the key to his abilities. They're more like explorers, Ant-Man hummed before responding, I think Reed said something about them going out to the Earth's core today. Blizzard, the cryogenic supervillain, was arrested. His outfit consisted of an Eskimo-style blue and white parka over his cryogenic suit, a metal ice pack on his back, two wire-like pipes attached to blue gloves with white fingertips, and a face mask that slightly affected his voice. This isn't fair, Blizzard grumbled behind the lead Ant-Man. None of you could have taken me alone. An irritated wasp shoved Blizzard, causing him to stumble. Man, you're a whiner. You've been complaining since we caught you, Blizzard, which was really easy by the way, she smirked. Where are you taking me? Blizzard said as he and his escorts entered a room. What is this place? In the center of the new area was a steel door with a giant, 42, embossed on it, guarded by two Iron Man-like robots, albeit in a dark blue tint. Wasp took a look around before responding to the villain. Well, honestly I'm not sure, I haven't seen it yet. Well, after the breakout, Iron Man, Reed Richards, and I had a meeting, Ant-Man replied, swiping the card and opening the doors. We brainstormed ideas to make the world a better place. This was number 42. Thor did not appear to agree. To be honest, friend Ant, I don't think this will hold anybody, he said, shocked when an Uzi-like wall of light shone down on them. Ant-Man walked into the vortex, followed by Wasp and Thor, who gently pushed a hesitant blizzard through. When the heroes in Arresti reached the other side, they were greeted by a silver metal robot with a distinctive face design. Greetings, Dr. Pym. Good morning, ULTRON5. We have a new guest for you, Ant-Man said before introducing the visitor. This is Blizzard, he's awaiting trial. Ultron 5 extended his robotic hand and said, Greetings, Mr. Gill aka Blizzard. May I call you Donald? Blizzard shook his head, shocked. No, he exclaimed as Ultron formed a sphere of energy around him, causing the villain to float within it. The three Avengers followed the robot and villain to the heart of the prison, where hundreds of cells were guarded by Ultron-like robots. The facility's masterpiece, which was not lost on Wasp and Thor, was a massive cylindrical tube held vertically and containing green liquid with black dots within. Did I mention that I was really, really sorry? Wasp then observed other villains with bruises on their faces and said, nope, and it wouldn't help your case either way. Whoa, what's their story? She said of Ant-Man, who was staring at the same criminals. Ah, they are from Boston. Boston? Thor asked again, if memory serves me correctly, there is another mortal hero operating in the city. Wasp nodded in agreement with her Norse god comrade. You're right, Thor. I don't remember his name, but his reputation scares the criminal underworld in that city. I think he even has a nickname now. What was it again? She pondered for a long time before realizing what she had done. Ah, the ghost of Boston, that's the name. When the hero's nickname was mentioned, the terrified Boston criminals cringed. One of them became terrified and began hitting the walls in an attempt to flee. Is he here? Don't let him in here. Don't let him get us. Intense. Wasp gasped, for criminals do not lose when confronted by a hero, unless they are famous, such as those in the Avengers. If this ghost of Boston can frighten people, he would be a good addition to the team. I wonder if he's a team player. Manhattan's Avengers Mansion The tour was brief yet thrilling for the masked ninja. The mansion was stocked with interesting technology that may potentially help humanity, such as alternative energy and disease curing, but he had no understanding how or what they worked. There were five of them at first, but Hulk and Hawkeye had to leave because the former was chasing the latter's sarcastic joke against the green monster. As the two Avengers and Assassin arrived at the armory, the two guys donned their hero personas. Captain America put on his connected mask while Iron Man finished up his characteristic red-gold armor. Patronus was glancing around with his hands over his back as he overheard the Avengers talk. Tony sighed as the discomfort from the earlier training session returned. Well, I appreciate the lessons in bruises, Cap, but the world has changed. A lot faster now than ever before, and it's only going to get faster still. I'm wired to a worldwide network of computers and satellites, Iron Man said as his HUD scanned Captain America's form and provided him with facts and potential weaknesses. The goal is to see danger before it gets here. 
I'm getting ready for the future and working to get humanity there in one piece. You're used to the old ways of doing things. They say those who forget history are doomed to repeat it, Captain said as he approached Iron Man with his arms folded. If the old ways include training and preparation, then perhaps you need to slow down a bit. Slow? Down? Iron Man repeated the words, as if they were foreign to him, as his mask lifted to show his face. I hear you talking but the words don't make sense. Patronus interrupted the conversation at this point. What the Cap is saying that basics are especially important regardless of the years and such. Captain said, thank you, Patronus. How you, my answer remains no, Patronus replied. Although the both of you have valid points, you still lack something that the other needs. Iron Man raised an eyebrow at his words, such as? Well, Iron Man, what you said about seeing the danger ahead of you is great and all, but what happens if you overlook the danger that is right at your door or feet, for that matter? Patronus inquired, knocking on the armor. A dazzling light flashed from behind them, alerting the group to the presence of a man in front of them. A man with dark purple complexion sat on a hover chair while approaching them, dressed in a red-black outfit. Greetings, Avengers, the man said as he sat up and the light went off. I am Kong. He reached for something in the air, and much to the trio's amazement, a portal opened, and the invader drew out a rifle-like weapon. I have come from your future to deliver a message to Captain America. You didn't see this coming, Mr. Futurist, Patronus cynically said. Kong launched a wave of energy circles that pushed Captain America away despite his block, while Iron Man raised his arm and produced an arc energy sphere to protect them. Iron Man moaned in agony as he battled to maintain the barrier active against the more powerful attack. Jarvis, activate mansion defenses. Missile sockets sprouted from the steel ground behind the heroes and fired a direct strike on the intruder. The shield was down, but it was a mistake because the armored man was shielded by his own green shield. More shots were fired by the mansion security system at the smirking intruder before he touched a button on his chair, causing the shield to stretch out and knock out the protection system. The conqueror finished it off with a rifle fire before stepping out of his chair in front of Iron Man. I don't care who you are, this ends now, Iron Man exclaimed before firing his repulsors at his opponent, who had vanished to avoid being hit. The invader returned next to him and with one hand hoisted the armored Avenger up. Okay, now I care who you are. He took a look at Iron Man's armor. Your armor is amusing, primitive but amusing, Captain America said as he threw his shield at the invader, only for Kong to deflect it in midair. Now, where were we? He asked, smirking at Captain. His finger swirled, and the vibranium shield flew back to Captain, crushing him against the wall while the invader hurled Iron Man against another wall and slumped to the ground. Jarvis, please give me a full analysis of Kang's armor and weapons, Tony demanded as the HUD scanned Kang's armor. Imagine Jarvis' dismay when he discovered he couldn't scan Kang's armor or hover chair. Who is this guy? Captain snuck behind the laughing armored foe, who turned around with his hand on his belt. The Avenger swung punches and kicks into Kang's body, striking minor portals. Who are you? Why are you attacking the Avengers? Kong responded, Oh, not the Avengers, Captain, you. Your questions, I am Kong the Conqueror. I have come from the 41st century, traveling to this backwater time period for one simple reason, to eliminate you from the timeline. He pointed at Captain, who took a step back before Kong pressed a button on his chest plate, unleashing a series of energy waves that sent a screaming Captain America away. Jarvis, full power to Uni Beam, exclaimed Iron Man before straightening his back and firing a light bluish energy beam from his chest. To Stark's surprise, Kong merely stood there and let his barrier protect him from the blast. That's not possible. Stay focused, Captain said as he approached Kong with Iron Man. Kong, you claim to be from the future. Why would you want to take out Captain America? Iron Man demanded. Kong responded forcefully. To save the world, the two Avengers came to a halt and looked at each other as they registered the answer, while Kong recognized something was wrong. Wasn't there three of you? He felt something tap his shoulder, and instinct pushed him to whirl around just in time for a fist to smash him square in the face. Captain and Iron Man watched in disbelief at the massive hole Kong had created after being punched by Patronus. Man, that guy was annoying. Let's go! Patronus exclaimed as he dashed inside the enormous room where Kong had crashed. Hawkeye and a man dressed in a full-body black outfit and mask resembling a panther surrounded the invader. Now, this is just some friendly advice, I'd stay down if I were you, Hawkeye said, a ready arrow in his hand. As Hulk lunged at Kong, he sneered before blasting energy waves from his helmet, knocking both Avengers to the ground. 
The green monster shoulder tackled the shield twice, destroying it on the second attempt, before grabbing Kong and lifting him into the air as he prepared to inflict massive damage on him. Hulk, wait! Iron Man exclaimed to the superhuman, we need answers, what do you mean by saving the world, Kong? Replied, in my time, I ruled all, but a disruption in the space-time continuum destroyed my reality, everything from existence. I traced the cause of the disruption to an anomaly in the time stream, something that should not have existed in the 21st century, Captain America. He then resumed his ship's conversation, Damocles, what is it? What the hell is a Damocles? Patronus inquired, as Kong was taken aback by the fresh knowledge from his servants and stared at him. Hey, what's with the look, purple breath? You want to start round two? Kong glared angrily at the hooded ninja. It appears that I was incorrect about the anomaly, he said, opening his fists and releasing lightning bubbles that hit everyone except Patronus, who leapt out of the way and landed outside the zone. While Captain America's actions are abysmal, it appears that you, he said, motioning to Patronus, are the main point of my reality collapse. Me? Patronus asked, pointing to himself and looking about. Are you sure about that? I mean I didn't do anything to upset your timeline. I'm a nobody outside of Boston and that's what I prefer. Kong brandished his rifle towards him. Killing you will be the first step to restoring my empire. Naruto cautioned, you have about three seconds to get that gun out of my face. Or what? Kong asked before being smacked against a wall by a hammer. That happens, Patronus said as he observed the hammer return to its owner and recognized three Avengers from the team roster during the trip. The cavalry's here. When his hammer returned to him, Thor seized it. You want to take someone's life, villain? Try ours, he exclaimed as Wasp shrank and Ant-Man rose in size. Yeah. Wait, what? Wasp exclaimed after registering the words of the Norse god. As blasters fired from behind Thor, forcing the Avengers and Patronus to escape the attacks until the chair returned to its owner, who took a seat, Kang's eyes blazed and his arm moved slightly. Wasp unleashed yellow energy bolts from her hands at Kong, but they were rendered ineffectual by the shield. Iron Man appeared in front of his ensemble. Give it up, Kong. Kong will not give up, Primitive, the Conqueror declared, his gaze fixed on the group in front of them. If you insist on fighting for the, hooded one's life, then I shall show you fools exactly what you are fighting for. Naruto sensed that the worst was yet to come as the entire room was bathed in the same blinding light as Kong had entered earlier. Earth year 2015 Naruto was taken aback by what he saw when he opened his eyes, and he was not alone. The Avengers observed the collapse of society around them, with the sun in the sky changing colors and flames engulfing the metropolis. W what happened here? muttered the ninja to himself. Kong made himself appear with his back to them at that point. This is what the hooded ones. The ninja answered, Patronus, just so you know, before being slapped in the back of the head by the little wasp. Patronus's presence in your time has caused. Kong whirled around and scowled at the masked ninja. It's all his fault, he snarled as Naruto narrowed his gaze. Thor took up a small toy and looked at it carefully as Iron Man approached. Where have you taken us, Kong? Kong clarified, not where, Avenger, but when. You stand in your New York City just ten years from your present day. Hawkeye, irritated, prepared an arrow for the Conqueror. You did this. You're mistaken, Archer. I didn't do anything, Kong said again. I'm not responsible for destroying your world, Patronus is. Iron Man extended his left arm to prevent Hawkeye from firing. Everyone just wait. Jarvis, connect to the Stark Industries network. Tony became impatient when Jarvis informed him that the network did not exist. Try shield, try everything. He was taken aback when Jarvis revealed that nothing existed anymore. T there's nothing out there, there's no one left. Of course not, Kong replied, as though it were the simplest option. You see, Earth will be consumed in a war very soon in your timeline, he said, looking up at the setting sun, Earth's sun will be a casualty of that war along with all life on the planet. Wasp inquired about the obvious, what kind of war could do that? A war between two alien empires, the Kree and the Skrulls, Kong replied as Iron Man and Ant-Man exchanged a glance that Naruto caught, by the end, it was Patronus that was truly responsible. Thor intervened this time. Nay, you lie, conqueror. No one man could be responsible for such destruction, least of all Patronus here. During his stay in Prison 42, he learned everything he could about the Bostonian hero's exploits and realized he was a nice person at heart. Not knowingly, that this Patronus should not exist in your time. He should not live at all and I am here to correct that. Kong made a firm decision. Patronus pretended to be distressed. Oh, 
Your words hurt me so much, Kong said, his gaze fixed on him. Seriously, what could I have done to cause all this? I stick to the shadows. I don't boast my deeds and I'm not part of a team like the Avengers. And that is the greatest threat to all realities, Kong exclaimed, motioning to the ninja. You are an unknown and that is most dangerous to my empire. Hypothetically, if I surrender to you and accept my death, are you going to leave Earth alone? Patronus hummed. Not hypothetically since I will crush you, but just to be sure, I'm going to advance the planet's technology in your time. I will ready your military and prepare them for the coming war. Kong was clenching his fist. Earth will be able to repulse the alien forces. After his statements, Ant-Man felt nervous, and how do you plan to accomplish all of this? Kong said, by conquering your world, I tell you this is a courtesy, this is going to happen. And there we go. All eyes were drawn to Patronus, who was stretching his legs and arms, I was going to kiss his a dollar dollar regardless, but that whole, conquering thing, just doesn't sit right with me, plus he has a punchable face. Q sweat drops from the Avengers, minus the Hulk, who appeared ready to assist him. Without further ado, Patronus stopped before shunshining in front of a stunned Kong and punching him in the face straight in the face. Let the butt whooping begin. Hulk chuckled as he chased them down. Now we're talking. Patronus laughed as he grabbed Kong and spun him around before unleashing the Conqueror at the green monster, who clothes lined him to the ground. Avengers, attack! Hulk commanded as his erstwhile teammates rallied behind him. Kong murmured before conjuring an energy net that blocked all of their attacks, including Thor's lightning strikes, Wasp's energy bolts, Iron Man's repulsors, and Cap's shield. He returned fire to the senders and used his arm to telekinetically halt a massive boulder, which he then tossed back at another thrown by Hulk. You really hope to defeat me by throwing rocks at me, you mindless monster. Smugly, Hulk smiled. It's called a distraction, smart guy. Kong looked over his shoulder and watched Black Panther swing his arms, damaging his armor before being shot by an energy bolt. Hulk leapt at him, arms lifted, for his signature Zamash move, but was repulsed by the shield. Kong searched for the person responsible for his empire's demise but couldn't find him. Where are you, Patronus? His response came when the ground beneath him split open, revealing Patronus as he launched a knee strike against Kang's chin. Here's a little special move I have for you. He channeled Chakra into his palm, forming it into the recognizable shape. Rasengan. Kong shouted in agony as the sphere forced him away from the ninja and burst when the invader collided with the shattered monument. The Avengers, for their part, stood there in spots, their gaze fixed on the cloaked hero, particularly Iron Man. This was the first piece of evidence that Patronus has abilities and is hence a more advanced human or possibly a mutant. Arg! Kong yelled from beneath the rubble, glaring at Patronus. I will destroy you, Patronus! The same bright light that had carried them to the present day shone as all eyes turned to the chair where Iron Man sat, commanding the technology. No! A very wise man once told me, those who forget the past are doomed to repeat it, Iron Man said, referring to an earlier chat with Captain America. Your technology is incredibly advanced, Kong, but some of its systems are based on very, very old technology, Stark Industries technology. Activate time circuits. Everyone present in Iron Man's declaration illuminated before returning to their current location. Manhattan's Avengers Mansion Year 2005 to Kang's chagrin, the Avengers, Patronus, and Kong returned to the big training chamber. You will pay for this, he ran towards the armored Avenger, knocking Captain and Thor aside as he leapt only to be stunned by his own hover chair's protection barrier and thrown back to the ground. Thor. Patronus summoned the god's attention. Let's hit him with the storm. Thor smiled and swung his hammer above his head, summoning lightning, while Naruto channeled chakra around his fist and wind swirled around him. Take this, said Thor as he aimed the lightning at Kong. Ikan. Patronus yelled, hurling a tremendous blast of wind towards the intruder. Both forces joined midair and struck Kong who screamed in pain as the attack stopped and he collapsed to his knees. Kong panted heavily from the attack, and electricity shorted out through his armor. This, is not over, Kong declared defiantly as Patronus, Captain, and Iron Man approached him. Cap and I don't always agree, but on this, we agree, Iron Man said as he triggered a miniature rocket launcher on his left arm, it's over. Kong smirked as he pressed a belt button. Damocles, recall now. The Conqueror and his hover chair vanished from view, returning to his secure refuge. Captain America complimented Iron Man, saying, Good work, soldier. Thanks. You know he'll be back, right? Captain asked, looking at Patronus, who was conversing with Hulk, Thor, and Wasp. He'll be back for him. 
Iron Man agreed with a nod. That's the problem with the future, it's always there waiting for you. Naruto felt uneasy in his stomach as he looked up at the ceiling, barely able to detect Kang's key above the Earth's atmosphere. Things are not going to be easy from here. Space Vacancy Sol System, near Earth Kang's time-traveling ship, the Damocles, floated safely away from the planet that is Earth in the vast star-littered emptiness. The crew of the ship, dressed in uniforms, waited for word from their monarch on the ship's bridge. The same blinding light appeared in the bridge, showing Kong while his armor was still short-circuiting from Patronus and Thor's combined strike. Did the natives surrender? said one of the bridge members. They did not, Kong replied, standing up from his chair after the short-circuiting stopped. It's time to show the 21st century how I earned the title of Conqueror, he said, raising his arms and channeling his almighty might. The might of numerous green saucer-like ships appeared around the Damocles as they all began their journey towards the habitable Earth. Kong Sir, the conquest of the 21st century has begun, one of the men declared after kneeling behind Kong. No one can stop me, not even the Avengers, Kong said as he linked to the command system, commence attack. TTIIPMX TTIIPMX TTIPM Manhattan United States of America, New York City New York. The residents of New York were in complete disarray as several of Kang's men unleashed countless massive robots that ravaged the metropolis. The National Guard had arrived moments before the attack began, but they were unable to destroy or even dent the robots, which quickly demolished the tanks and scared off members. They were not alone, however, as the S.H.I.E.L.D. helicarrier and its fighter pilots had arrived and counterattacked the ships with their energy weapons, only to find themselves on the verge of collapse. Report. The commanding officer yelled amid the fighting. Sir, a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent reported from his computer, the helicarrier is taking heavy fire from multiple unknown contacts, S.H.I.E.L.D. is ineffective. Keep the bird in the air, I'm not about to let her go down again, and S.H.I.E.L.D. isn't going down without a fight, stated the commanding officer. Director Fury. Fury turned to face one of his soldiers. This isn't just an attack on S.H.I.E.L.D. The United Nations are under attack. We're getting distress calls from all over. Sir, what are your orders? Someone get me the Avengers, said Fury, grimacing. Two teenaged males were racing for refuge from the blazing buildings and pandemonium in another part of Manhattan. One of the explosions was too close, as the person wearing glasses was thrown off the ground and crashed hard. As his spectacles were knocked off, he groaned in pain and squinted. After he retrieved his spectacles, his companion pulled him to his feet as one of Kang's robots towered over them. Blasts from the machine were deflected by Captain America, who flung his shield at the robot, killing it, but more arrived to take its place. Avengers, assemble! Captain America exclaimed after grabbing his shield. The first to respond to his summons was Hulk, who had leapt from afar and landed hard on one of the approaching Kong robots. The second was Ant-Man who sent flying red ants into one of the devices and told them to eat the circuits before exploding from within. So much destruction. Why would someone do this? Wondered the Ant-Man in miniature as he flew on his ant ride. Why? I'm going with. What? Hawkeye responded as he launched an arrow. What are these things? Aliens. As Black Panther appeared and gave his advice before jumping off and destroying the invading robot, it was split apart from within. Unlikely. More likely, this is Kong. Kang's spacecraft unleashed a second wave of scarab-like objects, but several were destroyed by Thor's lightning. Truly, this is a battle like Midgard has never seen before. Aid me, Wasp, the Thunder God shouted as Wasp in her small form blasted at the incoming scarabs, but they proved useless. Ugh. I need bigger stingers, the Wasp grumbled before flying around and blasting the approaching scarabs. This is crazy. Do we have a plan? She exclaimed as Thor smashed a scarab nearby with his hammer. Where is Iron Man? New York City's Hudson River, return fire, yelled Fury. One of his guys answered, Sir, all weapon systems are offline. We can't sir, incoming, he exclaimed, pointing to the approaching scarab, which was swiftly obliterated by Iron Man's uni-beam. What took you so long? said Fury. Iron Man joked as he fired his repulsors at the scarabs, traffic's heavier than usual. The helicarriers a sitting duck out here, Fury. You need to get to the city safe. The Avengers can handle it. Oh yeah, you want to tell me how you intend to do that, Fury responded, rather than asking. Sure, Iron Man replied, after I figure it out myself. He stopped firing after Thor's hammer crushed the last of them in the vicinity and returned to Thor's hand. The Hulk boasted that he would smash more machines than I, Thor smugly smiled at the challenge, he's sorely mistaken. At the very least, Thor, act a little more concerned about this, Iron Man admonished. 
Thor appeared to lose some of his ego as he donned a serious countenance. Sadly, I have faced such odds before in the defense of Asgard. Jarvis, isolate and analyze one of these things, Iron Man said as his HUD scanned one of the scarabs. The one he chose, however, was obliterated by a blur. What the hell? And another one here. That is, yes, it's Patronus, my other challenger. Thor screamed as Patronus leapt from scarab to scarab, killing them with his Kogitsune or Rasengan. Patronus had slashed through one of the final scarabs before floating alongside Iron Man and Thor. That puts my total around 50, Thor. What's yours? 60, Patronus, Thor replied with pride in his voice, much to Patronus' chagrin. Patronus shunshined away from their location, saying, I'm going to see how many Hulk crushed. Iron Man sighed before scanning one of the scarabs. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. I kid thee not, Thor replied softly, knowing his friend disagreed with the challenge. No, these robots, these ships, I know this technology, Iron Man stated, this is all. Did you really believe you defeated me? A hologram of Kang's head materialized in front of the soaring Avengers. Kong. Thor exclaimed angrily. I warned you Avengers that I would save this world. Under my rule, Earth would be strong. It would survive oncoming onslaught. Kong said with joy. I've been studying the strengths and weaknesses of your Earth's defenses, and now the true conquest begins, the smiling Kong said as he vanished from Iron Man and Thor's fearful gaze. Manhattan is a neighborhood in New York City. Rosarangan, Patronus punched two Rasengan into the robot's back and out of its chest. He moved away from the fallen robot, where he met up with Black Panther and Hawkeye, as well as Hulk, Captain America, and Ant-Man. You guys good? We are fine. Thank you for your concern, regardless of the circumstances, said Black Panther. When the robot's eyes shone light blue, their banter came to an end. Uh oh. I think you're right about that, Hawkeye, Naruto said as the robots began to repair themselves. Hulk grumbled in annoyance, while Ant-Man was taken aback by the action. They're regenerating. They're self-repairing. This was all an act. We didn't even make a dent. Ant-Man grew to huge proportions and battled the restored robots, but he was quickly overwhelmed by their vast numbers. Hawkeye, Panther, Patronus, fire at will. Captain exclaimed as he turned to face the Hulk. Hulk, help Giant Man. Hulk remained still until Patronus exclaimed. Do it, Hulk, and I'll treat you an SMASH to pizza on me. I like that. Hulk exclaimed before leaping to assist Giant Man, only to be slammed into a building by a scarab. Sometimes I hate this job. The Avengers and Naruto fought hordes of robots that kept mending themselves by the minute. Thanks to his vibranium suit and claws, Black Panther sprinted on fours on the side of a skyscraper until he nose-dived towards a robot and slashed through it with his finger claws. Oh, come on. Hawkeye said as more robots landed nearby, and he slid out of the path as Giant Man battled to escape the robots on him. The archer fired his arrow before reaching into his quiver for another, only to find nothing. Crap, I'm out, he exclaimed as he prepared his bow as a melee weapon. Captain America used his shield to deflect an energy blast, but he was driven back by the power as he stood back to back with Hawkeye. We got a big problem out here, old man. Look around us. Captain confirmed, I know. We need to set up a rally point to regroup. How many explosive arrows do you have left? None. Will a Kanai help? The two Avengers looked up and saw Patronus spinning around like a tornado, laced with hundreds of Kanai in a blazing sheet of paper. I'd cover my ears if I were you too, Naruto said, extending his arms. Futon, Kazaheki. After Naruto's exploding Kanai made contact, the entire street where most of the Avengers were fighting burst, shattering glass and robots alike. While the others were on the rooftops, Captain America and Hawkeye were secure in Naruto's windshield. As Naruto channeled chakra around his fist, the remaining robots marched towards them. Ikan. Naruto swung his fist at the robots, unleashing the standard and original form of his technique as the tremendous wind ripped through the robots with its cutting nature until nothing remained. Thor, Iron Man, and Wasp witnessed the elemental attack's devastation, prompting the latter to whistle in adulation. That's something. Thor produced lightning and channeled it to the scarabs in the vicinity, along with Iron Man's missiles, before they all flew to Captain America's recommended rally spot. Is everyone okay? Iron Man said, clearly concerned. We don't have time not to be. Captain America replied before hurling his shield at another robot and leaping over wreckage. These things are running through the city block by block. We need to divert them. It's Kong. Ships, robots, everything. Patronus grumbled angrily. This guy. I should have been tougher on him, 
He whispered under his breath before speaking loudly. What's the plan here? Stop his invasion of the city, Iron Man said before Fury's voice could be heard over the radio transmission. Not exactly. Tactical targets are being hit all over the eastern seaboard. This perplexed Ant-Man sits atop his red ant mount. Why New York then? There's no tactical target guarding the city. Captain answered after slicing through a robot with his shield, the Avengers are the tactical targets. Patronus offered his thoughts, but I have a feeling there's more to this than just the country. You're right, Patronus. Although our earlier discussion will have to be postponed after this, the invasion is not happening just in New York, but all over the world. He's taking over the entire Earth. Uzumaki Manor in the Homestead Grounds, Massachusetts, United States of America, is forested. The ladies of the Uzumaki clan were horrified by the hologram created by the Crystal Skull. Hundreds of robots were destroying structures all across the world. The ladies could only feel fear and hope that their spouse would return to them safely in their arms. Dada? Mumbled Ashla, sensing something was wrong. Masaki was the next to say, Dada. Her eyes, like her brother's, began to well up until they were corrected by their mothers. It's fine, Ashla and Masaki, Seiko said calmly. Dada will be back, okay, he will be back. Kuroka, Rhea, and Medusa wanted to help Naruto, but he had told them to stay at the homestead because the property was magically protected. In the case of a crisis like this, Boston was safeguarded by an invisible barrier created by many seals strategically positioned throughout the city. Please, Naruto, return to us, Rhea, Medusa, Kuroka, and Seiko implored together in their minds. Several hours later, Naruto deflected a blast with Kajitsune before eliminating a robot. Long ago, after they gathered at Avengers Mansion for a little respite, Iron Man remained behind to track down Kong, while Black Panther retreated to his homeland of Wakanda. For the second time since his search for Black Cat and Spider-Man, the ninja stood atop the Empire State Building, witnessing the limitless numbers of Kang's machines and scarabs. The Avengers began well, but were gradually overrun to the point that even Hulk and Thor battled to defeat them. He overheard Captain mention the necessity for an army to equalize the odds for them, leaving Naruto with only one option. As he shunshined to the Hudson River, Patronus closed his eyes and began flowing chakra over his entire body. Let's get to work. Taiju Cage Bunshin no Jutsu. As the scarabs and crab-like robots converged on the place, a big smoke cloud drew the attention of both allies and adversaries until Patronus came out with a Rasengan and destroyed a robot before being blasted by three machines. Then, as innumerable clones of the hooded hero Patronus sprang from the cloud, they began to mow down any scarabs and crab robots in their path. And, most of all, the clones were in sage mode, allowing them to treble their efforts. Patronus, how did you, you wanted an army, Captain, you got one. Patronus quietly commended his master's training for increasing his already huge chakra reserves. Although they won't last long, so let's make them count. He lied because his clones had grown strong enough to take a hit. The clones can now withstand a Hulk-related onslaught or anything comparable. Thor and Hulk arrived near the old Naruto after destroying a few machines, while Naruto's clones began to overpower the robots throughout New York City. Wasp and Ant-Man flew their Quinjet towards one of Kang's armada ships. You seem overly excited about this, Ant-Man said to Wasp as she piloted the plane away from the energy bolts. However, the Quinjet was hit in the bow of the hull and swiftly burst, but Wasp smiled as she dragged her equally sized partner to the ship. See, everything went as planned, she replied confidently. You do realize those Quinjets cost Tony 20 million dollars each, don't you? Ant-Man remarked rhetorically. Well, it wasn't my plan. Wasp said as she soared through the gap and into the ship. Wasp dropped Ant-Man and flew to Kang's officer's face, much to his surprise, after they went via a vent all the way to the bridge. Hello, she said before stinging the alien with her stingers. Ant-Man shrank down to his usual size and examined the apparatus. This is a similar design to Kang's time chair. Iron Man and I theorized that Kang's equipment has some kind of temporal stasis. A what? Patronus inquired over the intercom. Something that allows it to remain in this era, like an anchor. I don't understand half of that, but can you destroy it already? Wasp agreed with a nod. My pleasure, she said as she zapped the control console, and the ship faded out of existence until it vanished. Unfortunately, Ant-Man lost his balance and plummeted to the ground, where he immediately shrunk himself before being saved by Wasp. Sorry about that. Ant-Man groaned before informing the Avengers and Patronus to destroy the Armada ships in whatever manner they could, prompting the ninja clones to attack the ships in order to outdo Hulk and Thor. 
the two powerhouses grinned and leapt at the armada ships until they were all gone. Phew, that was close, Patronus muttered before grunting loudly as all of his clones dispersed at once. Damn it, clones, I'm still not used to that. He felt a touch on his shoulder and turned to look for Captain, Captain America. The first Avenger applauded the ninja, saying, great work, soldier, you really saved us there. Patronus gazed up into the sky and said, yeah, but this isn't over yet. This was just one battle and there are more ships, robots around the world. The captain nodded. This war will not end until Kong is found, Stark said over the comms link. Then you are in luck. You found him? I found him. Aerial view New York City, Manhattan, New York. After Iron Man reported Kang's location, all Avengers and Patronus retreated to the base to gather equipment for the next phase of the mission. They were all wearing space armor designed by Iron Man with their motifs, with the exception of Hulk and Patronus, who hoped that the Nemean lion fur and Inari's robes would shield them from the vacuum of space. Instead, they have oxygen masks to keep them alive during the trip. They were all in the spaceship as it flew towards the atmosphere, focused on defeating Kong and ending his conquest. The airborne vehicle was escorted by five of Ant-Man's Ultron guards from Prison 42, much to his chagrin, but five was better than none. Patronus commented, you know, I'll never get used to this. Wasp said, fighting together with the most awesome team in the globe? No, going to our deathbeds in space, Patronus protested, as battling in space did not sit well with the ninja. In truth, he desired to remain on Earth and assist other cities in the United States or other countries, but he recognized that the Avengers required all the assistance they could get. He also wants to send Kong back to whatever century he came from. Captain saw the ninja's anxiety in his voice but elected to address it later. How much time do we have? His response came in the shape of three dazzling lasers that came from space, temporarily blinding him and his teammates. Not enough, Iron Man said emphatically, his arm concealing his eyes. Wasp inquired about the obvious. What is it? Hawkeye said, opening a shield that allowed him to see through a window and noticing the lasers aimed at something. It's a laser sight targeting beam, Hawkeye said. A really big one. Can you tell where it's aimed, Stark? Uh, yeah. Us, Iron Man replied hesitantly. But we're right over the city, and a blast that size will destroy everything, a stunned Ant-Man countered. I think we can all agree Kong will go to any length to achieve his conquest, Patronus stated matter-of-factly. Can't this thing go any faster? You know what, let me out. I'm going to stop the laser. However, when he opened the hangar door, one of the Avengers beat him to it. Nay, I shall go. A determined Thor flew out of the spacecraft, quickly outmaneuvering the vehicle ahead of them. Iron Man said, whoa, I've never seen Thor fly so fast, what's he doing? Captain America replied, saving us all. Thor continued to fly higher before spinning his hammer at almost uncontrollable speeds and channeling lighting around the weapon, forming a type of shield. For Midgard, he soared forward at high speed, Mjolnir at his side, as Kang's laser exploded from the sky towards him. While the spacecraft deflected the laser and damaged some of its systems, a spectacular display of blue and green light bombarded the environment. Thor, on the other hand, fell back to Earth at terminal velocity with no sign of awakening. The Avengers and Patronus stood by, hoping that the smoke-trailing Norse god would awaken soon. Wasp protested out of fear, he's still falling, we have to go back. We can't. Thor gave us a chance, Iron Man said. We have to keep going before Kong fires his weapon again. Ant-Man pressed his hand to his helmet. Ant-Man to Ultrons 1 and 4, break off and catch Thor, he instructed his creatures, and the specific models obeyed. Wasp worriedly murmured, Thor, Goldilocks is tough, he'll make it, Hulk promised his diminutive former partner. Patronus laughed. Yeah because without him, who are you going to challenge in smashing things? You, uh, no, Patronus said, looking at Ant-Man, any news about Thor, is he okay? The Ultrons have him, he's comatose but alive. With that in mind, the squad resumed their journey to Kang's warship, where they encountered trouble in the shape of similarly sized spacecrafts, hang on, Iron Man exclaimed to his passengers. The Avengers spaceship spun, barrel rolled, and dived out of the laser's path before firing back, courtesy to a happy Hawkeye and Patronus manning the onboard cannons. The Ultrons defended the Avengers, but they were also annihilated until two survived. Although Iron Man saw the need for additional assistance and chose to take severe measures, Captain, you take the yoke, he ordered as the first Avenger grasped the yoke, Come on, you're with me. Wasp asked hesitantly, Uh, don't you mean Hulk? She grudgingly flew outside into space alongside Iron Man, 
where she saw the entire Earth in front of her. Wow, I can't believe I'm in space. Jan, Jan, focus. We need to clear a path for the others, and they accomplished exactly that as the Avengers spaceship approached one of the closed airlocks. Fortunately for them, Hulk opened it with his fist, allowing all of them to enter, including Wasp and Iron Man, before a force field closed the opening. Hulk and Patronus both said simply, that was fun. Hawkeye, Wasp, and Captain America were tackled off the ground by many unknown forces, giving the strike team no respite. Patronus glanced about until he noticed three men atop their spacecraft, each with a distinctive clothing and weapon. We have company. Our Lord Kong had been expecting you infidels, now die. The Damocles Bridge, Kong relived the fall of his kingdom, which increased his anger for the hero Patronus, whose efforts contributed to its demise. What he told the Avengers in their first encounter was largely false. His empire was indeed stable and prosperous, but there was a republic with equal authority and technology. Because the republic and his empire were allies in a battle, they coexisted peacefully. Kong had no intention of doing so. He desired to rule over the entire planet, he didn't want anyone else to see it, as a result, he will solve the situation and restore his entire kingdom as the sole monarch. Kill them all. I want them dead, Kong said over the communications, I will not be beaten by a bunch of Neanderthals, hold the line. Damocles has breached the airlock. As the elite guard prepared to take them all out, Naruto assumed the Furinji style stance. As the guards blurred and knocked around the Avengers, his eyes widened in disbelief. Wasp launched her stingers at one of them, but she was swatted aside by a backhand, while the scimitar-wielding guard sliced one of the Ultrons from behind. The Ultron attempted to shield his creator, but it was smacked away by the ace of the mace-wielding foe, who Ant-Man reduced in size to avoid as Hulk lunged at the axe-wielder. Unfortunately for the green monster, his prey vanished and reappeared behind him before striking Hulk with his mace. Hulk! Captain exclaimed before using his shield to deflect the third guard's energy pulses. Iron Man fired his uni beam at the sword wielder, while Wasp shot her stingers at their shared target, and Hawkeye joined in on the attack. Unbeknownst to the Avengers, their adversaries were strolling around casually, despite the fact that their speed was too fast for them. Naruto's thin swordsman, called Samurai, merely diverted their missiles away from him and at the other Avengers. Iron Man was blasted by Hawkeye's shot, the archer was shocked by Wasp stingers, and the yellow Avenger was rebuffed by Iron Man. Naruto winced at the sight of Hulk and Captain America being pushed together by Gladiator, the quick mace-wielding guard. These guys are too fast for them, the ninja observed, realizing he was no longer alone. Lord Kong wants your body, so I, Gunslinger came to a halt when Patronus seized his throat and lifted him into the air. You know, I've heard this story before, Patronus said to the extraterrestrial invader. Now let me show you what I do to those who monologue. He choke slammed Gunslinger to the floor, forcing it to cave beneath his strength. Not talking now, are you? He mocked before rising up and noticing that he had both Gladiator and Samurai's attention. Are you just going to stand there or do you want me to come to you? The Gladiator and Samurai exchanged glances before swiftly disappearing from view. Unbeknownst to them and the Avengers, Naruto could see them running around him in a pincer attack. They reappeared and swung their melee weapons, which Naruto stopped with the adamantine metal plates on his hidden blade bracers. Patronus stooped slightly before pushing them back and kicking the gladiator away, then using his pivot blade to cross swords with the samurai. Gladiator roared before charging towards Patronus, who sensed his approach and twisted his body out of the way. Naruto instantly responded with a sharp uppercut to the gut before blocking samurai's pivot blade blow once more. The ninja then back flipped out of the pincer attack before charging at them again, this time with both hidden blades drawn. Is he going to kill them? Ant-Man wondered, alarmed by the hero's fighting style. The Avengers were watching the combat when they observed Patronus vanish in front of the surviving elite guard, then there were two, six Patronus in the airlock. He made clones again, but they looked different than before, Wasp noted, pointing out that the clones appeared translucent from their perspective. Coward. You choose to hide behind tricks rather than Gladiator and his partner Samurai both felt pain in the back of their necks before collapsing to the ground. Patronus Bunshin vanished when he stopped moving and glanced at Hulk. Big Greenie, do your specialty, he said as Hulk nodded and twisted the mace around the elite guard to keep them under control. All right, what's plan B? He asked, noticing the expressions on the faces of the Avengers except Captain and Hulk. What? How are you able to see them? Ant-Man inquired, shaking his head to refocus on the work at hand. Never mind that. 
Now if we find the station's time drive, we can end all of this right now. Patronus raised his hand like a student at a classroom, is this the same thing you talked about the ships above New York? Yes. We destroy the drive and this whole base, Kong included, will disappear. The war is over. Captain America agreed with a nod. Okay, but how do we find it? Ant-Man turned and addressed his creation. Ultron 5, search for tachyon particles. The other Armada ships were emitting a lot of them, he said as Ultron 5 scanned the area with a red light from side to side until it located what they were looking for. Tachyon force detected. Ultron 5 said as he led the way for the Avengers, leaving Hulk, Patronus, and Hawkeye a little behind. Hulk was the first of the three to mention the robot, useful toy. Hawkeye commented as Patronus nodded, creepy looking, though. That's what I thought as well, Naruto remarked after staring at the robot. Apparently, their conversation was not far enough away from them, it is not a toy and it's not creepy looking, it's designed to look like an ant's head, Ant-Man said. Wrong choice. Patronus said as Hawkeye and Hulk laughed at the casual jibe at the scientist before joining the team. The Avengers and Patronus peered at the apparatus in front of them after dispatching more guards and finally reaching the area of the Tachyon Force. It was a giant tube that seemed to go on forever from both sides and probably took up half of the ship, if not the entire ship, because it was loaded with the yellow energy known as Tachyon Particles. Whistles that's. Patronus began to speak. Hawkeye finished the sentence of the hooded ninja. Big. I don't care how big it is, it's going to get smashed, Hulk stated before sprinting towards the tube and landing a straight left punch. Except that instead of breaking under his immense strength, it repelled Hulk away while tripping the alarm system. Oops. Electricity flashed across and all over the room as Captain America blocked it with his shield, while Patronus shielded Hulk and Hawkeye with his windshield until the latter shot one of his arrows at the system. Then came reinforcements in the form of crab-like robots similar to those they encountered on Earth. We need a plan here, guys, Patronus said as he ripped multiple robots apart with his Rasengan and Kagastun. Captain America looked down and discovered an unconscious Ant-Man on the ground after being electrocuted. Ant-Man, we need you, get up. He's out, Hawkeye said as he saw no reply from the pacifist. Cap, come on, we need to shut down the computer system before it's too late. He avoided a blast as a miniature wasp swooped by and fired her stingers at the growing number of crabs, while Iron Man used his uni-beam to take out a large percentage of them on the opposite flank. Maybe we can reprogram the thing. That's it. Iron Man said as he glanced at Ultron 5. Ultron, you. That's enough. Yelled an unlucky familiar voice as the machines separated and formed two rows while their master levitated towards the intruders. You came to fight me, Avengers. Here I am. The short-circuiting conqueror exclaimed. Hawkeye fired another explosive arrow towards Kong, who was hovering in midair. Hey, you know what? I'm glad Patronus is gonna wipe out your timeline. Patronus and Captain America both gazed at the archer. Because any future you rule has to stink. He fired, only for Kong to halt it midair, flip it around, and return it as Hawkeye jumped out of the way. Hulk got his turn and lunged at Kong, who pushed him back into the army of crab machines with his energy shield. Ultron 5 launched a crimson beam at Kong, only for the latter to deflect it and spat it out as flames onto the Avengers and Patronus, while Captain flung his shield at the Conqueror. Kong anticipated this by merely deflecting the projectile with a backhand before firing energy beams from his hands at Wasp and Iron Man when they coordinated their assaults. The Stinger-Uni-Beam combo was beaten in the fight, as the owners were thrown to the ground by the contact. Hulk had just finished off the machines and was about to use one as a weapon to smash Kong but the latter used his shield to break through before flying up and upper cut punching the green giant to the ceiling. Patronus, Captain, and Ultron stood there watching the strongest there is fall to the ground and not get up. Oh, that's not, what the hell? Naruto exclaimed, as he and his only cognizant teammates were wrapped in dull yellow energy spheres. This again? Oh, you again? He muttered angrily when he saw a smug Kong. Patronus. Latin for protector. It seems fate that we meet, he said turning the sphere so Patronus could see him fully. I am a conqueror but you stand in my way by protecting those weaker than me, than us. Naruto snorted mockingly. I doubt we're the same and you bet your ass I'd fight you any day and time. Amusing from a Neanderthal, but you and your teammates have fought well but this outcome was inevitable, never in question. Kong replied, I will do whatever it takes to ensure the survival of my timeline. The survival of humanity. Patronus sighed in response. While I may disagree about my actions being responsible for your empire's collapse, 
I too want humanity to live in peace and prosperity. This may seem like a long shot even now, but do you surrender? No, good. The bubble broke before bursting open, much to Kang's surprise, as Patronus was engulfed in yellow flames within. He peered at the cloaked ninja, but there were no flames to be seen, an illusion? Patronus mocked Kong by pointing his fingers towards himself and saying, less talking, more fighting. That's if you can lay a hand on me. Kong hissed at the challenge and grabbed two bladed swords from his portal before charging at Naruto. Kong slashed his blade with pinpoint accuracy, but Patronus stopped each stroke with his forearms, which were shielded by his hidden blade bracers. Patronus retaliated with a two-fisted punch to the stomach and face as Kong attempted to knock him off balance with a sweep kick. Yamazuki. Kong smashed against the wall, ignoring the agony, and charged at Patronus again, this time shooting energy blasts from his weapons. As his opponent pounced on him again, Naruto repelled the blasts with rapid strikes of Kajutsun and established the primary posture of the sword style he learned from his instructor. Kang's strikes continued, but they were never able to penetrate Patronu's sophisticated defensive parries, much to his chagrin. I learned countless martial art styles, both unarmed and armed, but I can't hit you. Why? Kong asked. During each exchange, Patronus smirked as he parried and chopped Kang's arms many times. He also observed Kong was tiring, which was excellent because the sword style was certainly worth mastering. Naruto had asked his master about the name, which was two, when he first learnt the skill. The first name was perplexing and unusual, but the alternative was simpler to remember. It was known as Sorasu. Dai here. Kong yelled at his despised foe. Naruto waited for the proper moment, then redirected the beams right back at Kang's chest. The conqueror moaned in pain as his suit short-circuited once more before looking up to see an awakened Iron Man demanding Ultron 5 to do something about the time drive. What are you doing? Your technology is advanced, Kong, Iron Man replied, but I'm a quick study, Ultron 5, now. It wasn't long before Kong received comms reports about his armada ships vanishing from the globe in space-time. He then fired a beam from his chest akin to Iron Man's uni beam towards Ultron 5 before it was intercepted by Patronus Kazaheki. After an unknown voice spoke in the chamber, Iron Man quickly ordered Ultron 5 to stop the countdown for the Damocles' departure. That's enough, everyone said as they watched a woman with black hair enter the room. She donned silver armor with long sleeves over a purple bordering black gown with a translucent veil over her shoulders and a tri-pointed crown on her head. Kong. Our Ravana, my love, what are you doing? A surprised Kong exclaimed, much to the amazement of the aware heroes. I should ask you the same question. Patronus shook visibly. Really now? This has to be a joke in the 41st century, Ravana exclaimed, her eyes widening with disbelief. It is a pleasure to meet you, Patronus, she said, much to her lover's chagrin. Do not honor him, Ravana. He is the cause of the disruption in our timeline. Kong retorted before being uppercut punched by Patronus and collapsing on his back. The ninja shrugged his shoulders in a, what can you do, attitude. So, uh. I take it you weren't aware of his conquest? Ravana shook her head. Would you like to talk? He inquired after sheathing Kogitsune. Yes. And with that, the conflict between the 21st and 41st centuries was over. After a few days, Manhattan's Avengers Mansion United States of America, New York City, New York. S.H.I.E.L.D. has been exceedingly busy in recent days, salvaging Kang's technology from the wrecked machines thanks to the Avengers and Patronus. Speaking of the hooded hero, Photographs of his clones were plastered across the world's news networks, much to his dismay, but there was nothing he could do about it now. Before departing for her own timeline, Ravana sent a universal apology to the residents of the 21st century. Ravana explained to S.H.I.E.L.D., the Avengers, and Patronus that their timeline was stabilized after the hooded hero's appearance in the timeline. Their empire exists in peace with the Republic whose fundamental government and creators were inspired by Patronus's heroic deeds including team-ups with the Avengers and other heroes. They were not shocked when Kong objected and demanded that everything return to his reign alone, but Ravana warned him not to. Kong ignored her and fled to alter the timeline for his own benefit. Kong was transported to the 41st century in a time cell for his acts against the Empire and Republic, and Ravana will rule in his place. Except for the Damocles, which Ravana donated to them as restitution, the Avengers, S.H.I.E.L.D., and Patronus watched the ships sail to their timeline. The ship was to serve as the new headquarters for SWORD, which was led by Carol Danvers of the Air Force branch. Patronus, on the other hand, 
was taken aback when Ravana revealed to him that he was her great ancestor during this time frame and a member of the Brotherhood. Despite the fact that she had no talents as a result of her significantly diluted heritage, Ravana gently assured him that she was happy to be his descendant and promised to honor him and his values. Patronus. Said the hero as he turned to face the first Avenger, I thought you left by now. Patronus sighed and shrugged. Not yet. Just taking in the scenery, he said, pointing to the sunset over the horizon, beautiful. Captain commended the ninja, saying, you did good, soldier, about the team. Cap. Patronus moaned, pausing. I appreciate the offer and all, but my answer is still no. I know. Good, Patronus said as he headed to the edge, but I don't mind being called in for backup in case you guys are in too deep. Captain America laughed at his remarks. I appreciate that, Patronus. Thank you for everything. He extended his hand, which Patronus shook before the ninja vanished in a yellow flash to Boston. Still couldn't get him to join, huh? Iron Man inquired, his company leader nodding. Same thing with Hulk. I gotta say that I'm proud about the big guy finding his own team. Both Avengers entered the mansion, saying, me too. So, we have Wasp, Thor, Panther, Ant-Man and Hawkeye back. That's more than I thought would return. Iron Man gave a nod. Well, you up for another training session? After the time with Kong we just had, my pleasure. Uzumaki Manor in the Homestead Grounds, Massachusetts, United States of America, is forested. Naruto dashed inside his house after Hiroshining back and held his family as tightly as he could with the little space in his arms. His wives kissed him all over his face, while the twins clutched his uniform as if they were scared to let go and he would go. It's okay, it's okay, I'm home now, Naruto comforted his family as he gazed out the window as the sun set and darkness fell. I love you guys, to be continued. That's it for this bad guys, thanks for listening to this video, I hope you did enjoy the pretty story and if it did, like, share and subscribe for more and thank you all for having support and have a great day.